442. Jason Denicott with you till 7. And time for us once again now to have another, uh, we call him the unsung hero. And this is a, a new feature we've been doing for the past few months. It's sponsored by Mercedes-Benz of Valencia. They're helping us to uh, recognize some people in this community who don't necessarily get the recognition that we feel that they deserve. And uh, this one that, the, that we're doing today is Jasmine Foster. She's from CEOC, from College of the Canyons. And she actually has a, a special guest in the studio who wants to kind of talk about why uh, she thinks that uh, Jasmine got nominated. That's a co-owner of the station, Jerry Sorati Goldman. Jerry. Hi, Jason. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Good. Jasmine is going to be our unsung hero. Why, do you, why do you think that is? You know, I've known Jasmine, I believe, for close to 20 years. We go back to our kids were at Silver Springs together. And I actually met Jasmine, I think, when her kids were still in preschool. We had approached her. We were in our second year of Michael Hofflin dinner and approached her about using her yard at the time. And that was when I first met her and then got to know her for years on the Sulphur Springs PTA, which we worked together for many years and did many fundraisers and lots of fun stuff. And throughout the years, um, have done many things with her in the community. In the last several years, she's been, um, even though she works at COC, she gives back hundreds of hours to COC. And I've worked with Jasmine on the K through 12 program. And we've gone out and I think created miracles in the community with different things. Um, and most recently, the SCV Habitat for Heroes project, which is a program under Habitat for Humanity, Santa Cruz, San Fernando Valleys, where Jasmine's been out with us building and painting and pulling weeds and doing all different kinds of things on the weekend. So. She's very special. She's one of my closest friends. I'm thrilled to be able to introduce her. She fought this, even getting this, <laughs> well, and, it, well, and put it find, off for a couple weeks. We find that to be true with a lot of these people that have been recognized so far. Janice Murray included, we just did her a few days ago. And I think that's, uh, that's a testament to the work that they do, is that they don't really care if they're recognized or not for it. They're going to do it anyway. So that's very cool. Yeah. And, it, I mean, this has been 15-plus years of working and, you know, she, You've got, you've got those people in the community that you can call, and with one phone call, we, we create things. And, you know, whether it's a homeless vet that I remember calling Jasmine. She was one of my first phone calls where we had a homeless vet, and Jasmine and got on it. And within an hour, I had clu- clothes and, you know, toiletries and everything I needed. So we love you, Jasmine. We're very proud of you. Thanks for for doing this. I don't deserve all this. Of course you do. So I am humbled. Truly. So now you can ask her all the questions. I'm out. Okay. All right. That's. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> she took all my questions. Actually, she told me everything about well, you already. Right don't have to do anything. Yeah. Now we're just gonna go home. No, I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, you work at COC. Your uh, your position is called the community liaison, which obviously we understand what that means. You interact with the community. You're kind of the go between between uh, the college and the community. But what does that mean on a day to day basis for you? What do you find yourself spending your time doing, Jasmine? Wow. Well, you know what. It, it I think that's one of the greatest things about my job is that I go in every day thinking I'm going to be doing one thing and my entire day can change within 15 minutes. Yeah. And that's one of the wonderful things. It's never routine. It's never mundane. It's always busy and exciting. And as the community liaison, I like to think of myself as the person that brings the college to the community for the people that can't come to the college. Okay. They have so many wonderful things going on, and what a great story to tell, whether it's veteran students, reentry students, um, our regular enrollment, which is about 24,000 students right now, summer programs, winter programs, community educational programs. uh, There's something for everybody. And I know from myself when I was not thinking about college yet because I had three boys who were still too young, and that was so futuristic to me. I was not aware of all the wonderful things that the College of the Canyons had to offer to the community at large until I started looking at it when the boys were getting a little closer to that point, and I I was just amazed. And um, it's an interesting story how I ended up there. Throughout my years raising my children, I was very active in the community, many different events um, for many different organizations, in, including, and at the top of my list was the boys, my children's school, which was the Sulphur Springs Elementary School. 
But I went to an event one evening, and uh, I was there with, uh, you know, a number of friends and Tom Lee, who I'm sure you know, just oh, yeah? to be at New Holland New Farm, Holland, yeah. um, was there and chatting with Dr. Van Hook, our chancellor at COC. And he said to me, so Jasmine, you know, your boys are getting older now. They're about looking at high school. What are you thinking of doing? And I said, my goodness, I might still have something to offer. <laughs> so I might be looking at a part-time job. And, I, you know, I, that was Saturday night. And Monday morning, Dr. Van Hook called me. I yeah. said, I don't know if you were serious, but if you were, <laughs> you know, come and talk to us first. And uh, truly, that's how it all started. That's and, great. you know, went in and talked to a few people to find the right fit. And it seemed like the public information office was exactly the right thing. And uh, it, it's just been really great ever since. It's blossomed ever since then. We're in the yeah. studio right now with Jasmine Foster. She's our Mercedes-Benz of Valencia unsung hero this time around. Uh, you can read all of the uh, features that we've done, uh, unsung heroes, at hometownstation.com. And uh, people getting recognition for uh, their service to the community and for what they do in and around the Santa Cruz Valley, which uh, we do appreciate. So you, uh, you mentioned your family and uh, obviously your boys are uh, most important to you. You come from, you're a transplant from New York and you came over mm-hmm. here to California. Big Italian family. What, uh, what was that like and uh, how did you end up here in the Santa Cruz Valley? Well, you know, I grew up in a little town called New Rochelle, New York, which is about on the borderline of New York and Connecticut. And I okay. uh, have uh, two sisters, an older and a younger, so I'm the middle child, uh, Italian family, you know, big cultural upbringing. And Italian was my first language. I did not speak English. Oh, wow. And no English was spoken in the household. Yeah. And in those days, now I'm aging myself. There were no special programs. Yeah. You were put in the classroom, and you learned to speak English. Sink or and, swim, uh, basically, yeah? yeah exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I went to uh, parochial schools for 12 years, all girls, Catholic high school. And uh, when I went to college, it was a real shocker to get into class and find, you know, a room full of men in the same class with me. Oh, because right. Because had been 12 been years separated. of all girls. Yeah, yeah. So I um, graduated from college, and... Uh, had a love interest in California. Okay. If you will. Yep. And so moved to California. Right. And sight unseen, came here, got married. And, uh, you know, just I have to say that for the first probably five years that I was here, I had one foot on the plane. I was going home. <laughs> At five years. I was well, that's going hard. Home. Yeah. You know, all your family and, uh, you know. Yeah. And, you, you know, a different culture, different yeah. environment. And I remember buying my first Christmas tree in 95 degree weather <laughs> and calling my mom and saying, Mom, it's 95 degrees here and I just have a Christmas tree on the top of my car. Yeah. So it was very different. Yeah. But I loved it. And, you know, once you start a family here and you get engrossed in the the environment and the culture of it all, and you become involved in the community. Um, you know, I, I, I loved it. And I it becomes it. your home after be, a while. It is my home. I've spent more time here than I than I my 21 years in New York and yeah. my 30 something years here. Yeah, I was uh, reading just uh, about you know all the different organizations you've been a part of here in and around Santa Clara. We're talking about things like the Senior Center, Habitat for he- or Habitat for Humanity, and Homes for Heroes up here. The Heart District. You've uh, done stuff with the city, uh, the SCV Chamber, the Lat- Latino Chamber, Single Mothers Outreach, Henry Mayo Foundation. So how do you take all that work that you do in your spare time? And couple that with the work that you do for COC, and couple that with your family time as well. You, it just seems like there's no there's no time left at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, you um, make it work. When you say it that way, it, 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 <laughs> it, it sounds it, overwhelming. It sounds to me like, oh my goodness, but and it's true. I'm I'm very busy. I I have a real high energy level, um, but. I think there's so much to be done and so much help that's needed in every avenue. Um, regardless of the organization, there's so many great causes in this community. And, you know, I really wanted to give back because I feel very blessed in many ways and very fortunate. And I also wanted to uh, be able to raise the boys in a way that they would understand the importance of understanding your blessings, being thankful for them, but understanding that there's always time to help somebody else. And, And it doesn't have to be a giant thing. It's just Whatever you can do, you should. I mean, let's face it, we're not going to sleep 15 hours a day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have full-time jobs. But even in my daily work, as I travel around the community and talk to different people, you never know where the conversation's going to go. And there could be just one little thing that someone tells you 
and in the back of your mind you know how you can help that person or you know someone that can help that person if they're looking for it. Um, so it, it's not that I really think about the hours. I just it just comes naturally to me right. and it's it's not to be boastful about that um it is a very cultural italian thing family community be involved do what mm-hmm. you can um so it just feels good to me and i've been blessed to meet the people that i've met along the way well what are some of the as you know you've, you've been exposed to a lot of different organizations out here in santa Clarita, which have been some of the most impactful to you what do you think uh i mean uh, you know i'm not going to ask you to rank which ones you like better or anything like that mm-hmm. but what what, uh, what what are the organizations that you really uh, that you've really fought hard for maybe that you th- that you think are really uh, are doing doing some good work or that you want to continue to work with well, I have to say that one of the uh, organizations that really touched my heart early on that I got involved with through another friend, through Jerry Goldman and another friend, my dear friend Erica Betts, uh, is the Senior Center. Yeah. You know, we're all going to be there one day. And, you know, as my own parents age, I realize that, you know, aging is really not for the weak at heart. It's challenging. They need help. They have very special needs. And I think it's important that we recognize that within the community, we all have parents that we need to take care of, or we know someone that has a parent that needs to taking care of. And I think that that organization has done wonderful things, whether it's the Meals on Wheels or their, their celebrity waiter dinner every year where other organizations come and help and try and raise funds. Just to sponsor a senior doesn't cost very much. And... Um, that just really touched my heart a lot of years ago. I was a single mother, and I thought, I could be a single old lady one day, and I would like someone to be there for me. So those types of things. And um, the other one that was very close to my heart early on was the Sulphur Springs School, where, uh, you know, Jerry Goldman and myself, we've all raised our kids together there, and they didn't have computers for all the kids in the schools. And one day we just sat down and thought, we can do this. We can create a fundraising event and get these computers in the classroom and under the very wise and wonderful direction of a lady named Sandra Smith, who, by the way, now is involved with the K-12 arts education program at the college after her retirement, um, we created a a great first Mustang Roundup, made a lot of money. We were able to put computers in the schools for all the kids, and that continues today. And from that, then we created other smaller events. And, uh, you know, it's amazing what you can do if you just do a little brainstorming with some of the parents and the friends that are out there. Great things come of conversations. Jerry came in here in the beginning and gave a very uh, a, a flowery and very loving introduction of you and said how much of an inspiration she was or that you were for her. Who are some of the people that have inspired you along the way, uh, you know, in the community or outside the community, family members, people you work with? Who are some of those inspirational people? Well, I would be remiss if I didn't say that along the way that uh, Dr. Van Hook at COC, I have always admired her. I've looked up to her. Um, when she speaks, you can almost feel yourself going towards her that you want to help and do things. And I think no matter who you talk to in the community, she w- they would agree with that. Uh, in- incredible visionary and, and great leader. Um, you know, my dad, mm-hmm. my dad is a great inspiration to me. I, he was an immigrant person, came to this country not speaking the language, struggled, worked hard, and made a great life for us. And I think it just goes to show that, you know, you don't stop dreaming just because you're awake. You got to keep dreaming and you got to keep moving forward. Um, There have been so many inspirational people. And on a daily basis, I'm inspired by people. The people you talk to have wonderful stories to tell and, and good things in their past and looking forward to their future. You just have to listen hard. But I have to tell you that I think that my three greatest accomplishments, they call me mom. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the kids, of course. The kids, the kids. Well, listen, well, congratulations on this uh, this honor. I know uh, Jerry said it was like you know pulling teeth to get you in here. We're glad that you finally <laughs> were able to come in here and uh, get a little uh, pat on the back. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Continue to do the great work that you do, and thanks, Jasmine, for coming in. I'm humbled in. and honored. Thank you. We appreciate it. Jasmine Foster from College of the Canyons. She's our Mercedes-Benz of Valencia unsung hero. Uh, the audio from this, the video, and uh, a, a lovely story from Stephen K. Peoples will all be posted next week on our website. Make sure you check it out at Hometown Station. Thank you, Jasmine.